Hello everyone, it's Daryl, and today I wanted to show you a selection of vehicles here from the Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan. And the particular one I want to show you today is a collection of presidential vehicles that I think you'll find fascinating. This one here is Teddy Roosevelt's horse-drawn coach called the Brom, circa 1902. And this was the actual coach that Teddy Roosevelt rode in on many occasions. He didn't care for automobiles. They rarely used one, it says. This two-passenger private coach with the horses up front was closer to the ground for easy entry. It was not custom built, but was simply a door-bought machine, or door-bought coach pulled by horses, as you can see in the picture here. And Teddy Roosevelt used this because he preferred it. Next, we have this open limousine that was actually used by Franklin Roosevelt. And we can see this huge photo here of President Roosevelt sitting in this car. And we're going to look at this. Isn't this amazing? It's a stretch limo. Lincoln. And it's just a beautiful open top limousine. And it's one of the first presidential limousines here that they have. The only one, one of four presidential limousines that they have here. This is a 1939 Lincoln that served as the president's vehicle from 1939 to 1950. And here's a, another photograph here of it in use with the president in it. It had special features that made it easy to lift the president in and out of the car since President Roosevelt was paralyzed. and. He enjoyed riding it in public with the top down as he greeted the crowds. And they would often let people come up to the car to greet him and shake his hand occasionally, I guess. But it's an amazing car, and it's restored here for you to see. This bubble top Lincoln replaced the 1939 model I just showed you. You can see it's been retrofitted to have more secure features and helpful things for the president to tour an open motorcade. You have running board steps and standing platforms in the back for Secret Service agents. You have a secure bubble top to protect the president from the elements and from potential dangerous assassins. You have a hand grip on top for the president to stand up and address the crowds. Uh, various hand grips inside jump seats that fold down for extra people, VIPs, or security agents to use. And this is a beautiful car. Looks like just beautifully restored inside and out. And this is, let's see, let's go up and see the bubble top thing. This was used, a 1950 Lincoln. President Eisenhower used this. And, oh, here's a picture right there of the oh, you're okay. The car actually in a presidential parade right here. They squeeze quite a few people into those cars. There's President Eisenhower in the back. All right, the next one we're going to see is this Continental right here. Another specially designed presidential motorcade car. We're going to go see that right now. This one has even more features on it to help the Secret Service in keeping the president safe. Um, features the step ladders here and the um, grab handles to hold on to for the agents steps even on the side of it here for agents to hold on to and grab onto a handle on the roof there and this particular car here is the 60s model lincoln continental that we're going to look at right up here this is called the kennedy car this is a 1961 lincoln presidential limousine and this is the exact same car that john f kennedy was assassinated in it did not have the protective roof on it he was touring in an open vehicle and this, this is the car where President Kennedy was killed. This is, he was sitting here in the back along with his wife Jackie. And if you've seen the tapes over and over again, 
you're pretty familiar with what this car looked like back then. After the assassination, it was taken and put in storage and then renovated along with the new roof and put back into service where the presidents continued to use it for quite a few years afterwards. And here's a photo of President Kennedy riding in this car. Right there. He also rode in the older, another Cadillac limousine here that this government had in its service too. So it wasn't just these cars that the presidents rode in, but this was certainly the most famous vehicle here in the collection of the museum. This one everybody wants to see, I think, but maybe people don't want to see it. People don't care anymore or remember, but I don't know. I always see it when I'm here. All right, and one more presidential limousine, a more modern one here. This one, President Reagan actually rode in along with Nancy. You can see the photos of that right there. There's the car, and there's President Reagan and his wife Nancy along with a whole bunch of vigilant Secret Service agents keeping a close eye on things. And here we are. This one has the actual presidential seal on the side of it. Lots and lots of room in the back end. This one seems to be the longest of the bunch, I think, lengthwise. And it has a huge pull-up handlebar on the back, uh, double sunroofs that open up so the president can stand up and greet people. This is just a beautiful, beautiful presidential limousine here. This is called the Reagan car, 1972 Lincoln, which was used from 72 to 92. And this would have been used by, well, 72 would have been Richard Nixon. Uh, this would have been used by Presidents Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, and the first President Bush. Oh yeah, it, tells, it says that right there. So, there you go. This has a deluxe two-way communication system. Um, room for people to stand up. A public address system so the president can address crowds. And special lighting inside. Full armor plating, bulletproof glass, handrail rises. And run flat tires in case someone tries to blow the tires and attack the president. And we're back to the Kennedy assassination vehicle here because this is the one I always want to see. Oh, if we look right, this is a good shot right here, you can look right into the back seat where the President and Mrs. Kennedy were sitting. 